Welcome back to This Practice Update. I'm your host, Dr. Farzana Hafizullah. Joining me today, Dr. Timothy Pluard. Excellent to have you back. Good to be here. So Dr. Pluard, you were involved in a very interesting analysis of the Mona Lisa II trial. Looking specifically at tumor response and pain reduction, can you remind us about the Mona Lisa II trial and what it was designed to evaluate? So the Mona Lisa II trial was a first-line trial of women, postmenopausal women with hormone receptor positive breast cancer, comparing ribociclib versus placebo in conjunction with an aromatase inhibitor, obviously showing, as we all know, yes. the significant impact of ribociclib on the progression-free survival, uh, which led to its approval. Yes. This analysis was really looking at uh, the objective response and pain reduction, particularly in this population where bony metastases may be a significant issue it's important to know that we're seeing objective responses which lead to pain reduction in these patients because obviously we want symptom improvement as well as disease control. And what we saw was that there was, in those patients who had pain, a significant reduction in pain and clinical benefit from symptom management. So it, it's helpful because oftentimes when physicians are trying to make the decision, does a patient is a good candidate for endocrine therapy mm -hmm. or should they go to chemotherapy, we now can say that you'll get pain reduction with the combination of ribocyclib and an aromatase inhibitor. So you think these results will suggest justifying the use of CDK4 and 6 inhibitors in this patient population then? I do. I think okay. it gives us that assurance. What are some other ongoing, maybe unresolved questions surrounding the use of these CDK4 and 6 inhibitors for the management of breast cancer? So they've been quite successful in the first line. I think it's still an open question. Do yes. all patients need CDK4-6 inhibitors uh, in first line, or are there some patients who can still be treated with endocrine therapy alone and reserve the CDK4-6 inhibitors for progression? Um, the unresolved question of whether we should be continuing the CDK4-6 inhibitors beyond progression and changing the endocrine backbone remains unresolved, although we're starting to see some some data which may help us to stratify some interesting data about uh, the molecular mechanisms of resistance was presented today uh, showing that in some patients it's RB that yes. is altered and continuing a CDK4-6 inhibitor in that context is probably not going to be effective um, and changing uh, to a different strategy would be necessary. In others, it appears that the molecular mechanism of resistance is related more to the endocrine component, and so continuing CDK4-6 might make sense in that population, but those are questions we're going to have to evaluate moving forward. Well, thank you very much for highlighting this information. We so appreciate that. My pleasure. And to our viewers, thank you again for joining us for another edition of Practice Update. Please join us back again soon for another timely update.